This is Father Jacob Bertrand Jansen. And this is Father Bonaventure Chapman. Welcome to God's Planning. Thanks to all those who support us. If you enjoy the show, please consider making a monthly donation on Patreon. Be sure to like and to subscribe to God's Planning wherever you listen to your podcasts. Father Bonaventure. Father Jacob Bertrand. Here we are. We are here. Yeah, kind of middle of the summer Middle of the summer. Yeah, just about the end of June. So uh, just still, it's like I think of summers and then we have like weekends. Uh, there's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday when I was growing up. And Friday is like anything, any fun you have there is free fun. Saturday is like you have the duty to have fun because it's Saturday. It's the weekend. And then Sunday is like the depressing. Well, technically it's still the weekend, but we're going back to school the next day. So it's just a wash. And I feel like June, July, and August are similar. Like June is like a freebie. You can either have fun or not have... July is the one where you actually have to kind of really step into summer. And August is kind of sad face. What do you think about that? That's interesting. Yeah, it feels right phenomenologically, right? Because June's kind of like, I don't feel anxiety if I'm not in summer mode in June. But in July, if I... I kind of feel like that with May, though. Oh, yeah, that's... May's, May's like anticipation. May's yeah. like Thursday night, you know? Okay. May's like Friday's That's coming. Fair. That's fair. Yeah. yeah, I kind of like that. Usually yeah. I, when people propose things that are good ideas, I disagree with them because they're not my ideas. But yeah. This one you can I, take this one. Yeah. Don't you like it? I like yeah. it. It feels good, yeah. Yeah, and I think in some ways because like New Hampshire is just like chilly almost all year. Like June has been, especially the beginning of June has been like really chilly, so it's... It's kind of free. Like if there were, there have been a couple warm days. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah, this doesn't. But then like when July comes, the sort of pressure to like pressure, yeah. make it kind of work is really there. Because, That's the thing. It's a pressure yeah. to maybe this is a Polish German thing. Like the pressure to have to relax. That's like right. it's to me really yeah. hard. Like yeah. to, that I want to do this well. Yeah. It's a bit like fall. I always feel a ton of pressure in October to do fall well. Yeah. And I always feel like I fail at doing it well. No matter yeah, how many like leaves I look at or PS gourds that you pick yeah, up. Yeah, pumpkin, pumpkin spice lattes yeah, exactly. I drink. You just it's never it sufficient. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, well, something that might be able to to help your summer yes. summer excitement yeah. is is our movies. Summer movies. There's always yeah. like right. There's like a release of movies this in the, the summer. Summer blockbuster, blockbuster kind, of kind of thing. thing. A lot of times they wait until you usually don't get to see good to, good movies are usually not released um, between like Christmas time or m- middle of spring towards towards the summer because people are going to wait till the summer to see these things. Yeah. Um, to get out of the heat traditionally before air conditioning, movie theaters had air conditioning, this kind of stuff. Um, so like, what, are you, what are you talking about? The 1940s? 1940s, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, with the Tommy about. guns and all that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, this was the... Yeah, okay, yeah. anyways. Um, well, favorite block summer blockbuster? Well, this one, I mean, as we'll say this summer, um, I'm, I'm excited about seeing the new Christopher Nolan Oppenheimer uh, biopic coming out, uh, which is going to be fantastic. Because Christopher Nolan mm. does time really well. So, you know, Interstellar, Tenet. Terrible. Um, uh, Memento, um, uh, Batman, um, you know. That's what are you talking about? The odd man out. But that was that was Christopher Nolan. He does, oh, uh, a Dunkirk, right? So I didn't see that. He does time. He, he always, he does things, weird things with time. That's okay. his kind of shtick. Yeah. And uh, an Oppenheimer, you're taking on the atomic bomb. Okay. Uh, so oh, I think that's, that's okay. It's going to be really, because be Oppenheimer, Robert Oppenheimer is a fascinating American character. Got it. Uh, so that's, well, that's cool. Maybe I'll see it. And then there's a Mission Impossible number 27 or something coming out, which, you know, I uh, I don't like Tom Cruise, but I have to admit that he is actually a good actor and also, wow, he just keeps going. Yeah. I mean, he's yeah. the best runner. Was, it, was um, Top Gun the Maverick. reboot? That was last I, summer, yeah, right? Yeah, was it last summer? I, I think, think it was so. last summer, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't do... Like movie, I haven't been mm-hmm. to the movie theater in a long time, and I don't dislike the movies. Yeah, it's just I haven't just been, and honestly, like the the sort of current climate of Hollywood is just such a turnoff to me that. Yeah, it's hard. It's to just score. hard to be motivated to be like I want to yep. go like engage with that, which isn't totally fair because there are there are good there movies are out there, and I do like the experience of the movie theater. There's something that can't it's be replaced. Cool. Yeah, the yeah. sticking feet sticking to the floor. Although they've made the movie theaters so like luxurious yeah. now, big seats, and you can yeah. have. I mean, order drink. You can order cocktails. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. You know. So, anywho, um, well, I guess here's to coming blockbusters and yeah. summer fun. But we're not going to talk about a new movie today. We're going to talk about well, not an old movie, but it's over ten years old. Oh, it's incredible. Two thousand twelve. Yeah, we're going to yeah. talk about the film entitled Argo. That's right. Um, 
which is a Ben Affleck, Affleck, yeah, not Affleck, Affleck film, yeah, um, from 2012, mm-hmm. I guess. Academy Award winner won the Best Picture. Did it? I didn't yeah, know yeah. that. Best Picture. It's good. I've seen it a couple times recently. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't remember. Maybe it was on a plane or something. I don't remember. Oh, perfect time to see it. Um, yeah, get the details. Of the plane? No, with a really small screen. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, and the kind of person next to you. That's right. Yeah, yeah. kind of sleeping. It's like being in the movie theater, uh, but not. Yeah. Um, but I guess do you do you want to set the stage for us? Yeah, of, sure. Of what's of what um, this is? Yeah, and it's one of those again, like Mission Impossible. I don't like Ben Affleck. I think he's a bad actor. But um, but this movie he actually does really well. So he surprises you, which is great. So uh, thumbs up Fair. to that. Okay. It's a historical based on a true story. So roughly one percent of it's true, probably no more than that. Um, it's with the Iran hostage situation. Yep. So when the Ayatollah came in, so November fourth, Charles Borromeo Day, somewhere around there. Um, in 79, 79 through 80. Um, and, of course, the hostages were released the day, I think, Reagan was inaugurated or something, which was a sense of, hey, um, you know, uh, we're not going to do the Jimmy Carter business, okay? We're going to level your country if you, don't give the, uh, if you don't give us these people back. So the hostages were released. But this is actually following six uh, Americans who escaped the hostage situ- situation and are are stuck in the Canadian embassy in Iran in seven, in uh, 80 and need to be extricated, uh, but instead of, you know, have to find some way out. And so it involves a CIA agent, Tony Mendez, which is true. He's a real person, um, really did this, uh, who has to come up with an interesting plot, a way to get six people out of Iran um, that, uh, that don't have the right information to get out. So they have to try different, have different schemes. And they decide eventually on... Um, at going as a movie uh, company, movie co- company such that he's a director, and these are like they have you know f- costumes, fashion design, director, associate director, producer, all this kind of thing um, for a science fiction movie called Argo. Um, and so he has to become, a, he has to actually like make the fake this movie right. uh, to go over there and then get them out the passport. So it's it's a it's kind of a uh, on your you know tense situation it's a this uh, it's a, a sort of mystery how it's going to work out it's a drama uh, it's a thriller um it's a comedy in some ways i think there's some i don't comedy. know if it's a comedy i don't know whenever john goodman's involved there's always kind of a comedic oh, yeah, aspect i, guess, I suppose yeah, there and, is uh, alan arkin's in there yeah. as well as the two um the, yeah. the, the, the two other uh, directors i think they are yeah um so there's a bit of that but it's a it's a it's it's an, a spy espionage one um that's meant to you're waiting till the very end, and then there's sort of catharsis as well, and there's champagne on a plane, and all these sort of things. Yeah, so. the 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 part of what what happens is that as they are as the embassy is being what overtaken, mm-hmm. um, there the these six Americans get out and they find eventually. Um, I was going to say not refuge, but a place to hide in the Canadian yeah, embassy right. with the Canadian ambassador. Um, and, and the sort of pressure or the, mm-hmm. the kind of catalyst of the movie is that as they're, as the Iranians are going through the documents that have been shredded, they're putting together right. like the pictorial thing yeah. of the staff. There's a time, of, there's a time limit for them to get out. They're going right. to, the longer they stay, the more likely the Iranians they're going to find know the picture. That who's X missing. number of Americans were there. X number of Americans have been, have left or are still yeah. under the Iranian watch and now six are yeah, unaccounted yeah. for. That's right. So that's, that's as the movie's going and progressing, um, that's, that's what's driving the plot. You, th- because the Iranians in the movie, who knows if this is actually true, but they use children to, to, they give them these huge piles of like shredded material yeah. and they're piecing together these photos and they realize, okay, there are these people who are unac- unaccounted for. And this is why, Ben Affleck's character, um, why why he kind of now is under pressure. Yeah, it's not only figuring out the way a way to get them out to sneak out these Americans, but why there's now a timeline pressure because the Americans realize that the Iranians have realized yeah. that six Americans are somewhere. Yeah, and unaccounted for. Yeah, um, and it sets up to my mind the interesting part about this movie, other than the fact that it's uh, the cinematography is good, it's a good mu- movie as an artistic experience. But also <clears throat> the moral questions involved in it, the moral issues, uh, particularly the the virtues, uh, and it, it brings which art I take one of one of the things arts ought, ought to do is to bring to to clarity certain exemplar 
exemplars or models of virtues or how we ought to act. Sometimes it's actually via negativa. Sometimes it's actually bringing the vices to total clarity. Mm-hmm. Um, but in this case, in this case, it's a bit of a mix, I suppose. Um, although we'll get to that vice, the vice part, potential vice later. But the virtues here, um, there's a number of situations because of the time crunch and the extreme situations that bring up some reminders of our ordinary experience where virtue could be helpful, particularly in my mind, um, courage and trust strike me as two kind of like two kind of virtues that it like picked out, abstracted for a second, and holds up in like a gem like quality, and then can get back into normal life. But it holds forth for you one the trust aspect, and maybe you have some versions of these too. I'll just speak first about I'll just speak about trust. Um, that these people, the six Americans, have to depend upon Tony Mendez, the CIA, and trust his plan. Um, and there are many times where they say, we want to know all this, we, you know, we, this can't happen, this is impossible, this sort of thing. And he just says, you're going to have to trust me. And they say, you know, we're, we're not going to do that. And he says, look, I... And there's one point where he, he's using the wrong name, right? So he's using his kind of fake name. Uh, and they say, is that, you know, and, and they have to turn one of the guys, one of the six Americans to join them. And Tony Mendez just gives him his name. He says, all right, my name is Tony Mendez, and gives him his whole story. So yep. it's, it's like, if you offer something personal, then it latches on for a trust. So this guy is able to, because he's made himself vulnerable and said, hey, I've got stuff in the line too, then they can they feel open to it. But it's still an act of trusting another person. And oftentimes I wonder uh, how much, especially today when we're so uber competent and we have so many more, so much more information in our hands with Google and WebMD and all this stuff, do, we, do I exercise the virtue of trust? Do I really trust in other people and depend upon them? Or do I try to think that actually I'm just my own island and I only have to deal, trust people because I haven't yet figured out how to do everything myself as I ought to do? So it really brought to front for me is how often I actually trust people and depend on people and how normal in a sense, and therefore how that ramps up to trusting God. Like, do I actually exercise the virtue of trust with other superiors, friends, that then for, opens me to trust in God who I cannot see uh, to to do things correctly. Yeah, that scene that you mentioned stands out because, as you said, like some of the the the, the Americans are super hesitant to trust mm-hmm. Mendez or Ben Affleck's character yeah. in this because it requires them to leave the Canadian embassy and to walk right into Iran yeah. Iranian hands right. with pictures and cameras in the open. Right, yeah. and and he convinces them as you just described of trusting by revealing who he is that he's like you said that he has something on the line too he's not just yep. a rogue agent he has a family he has you know all these so like actually his his like he trusts his them too. life is also in the balance yes. you know it's not just whatever um i it, it made me as you're as you're describing that and as i'm thinking about the movie and the virtue kind of mm-hmm. bit mm-hmm. um and your own sort of questioning of well do i trust or not mm-hmm. it's Often, I think the virtues, and in, in this, uh, as you're describing, it, often the virtues are can be questioned. Like, do I have mm. this virtue until they're needed to be put into action? Yeah. Um, even if we have them in a sort of um, habitual sense or dispositional yeah, sense, right? Like, yeah. yeah. Do I think I'm a prudent person? I mean, sometimes, but can I see if I'm a prudent person? I mean, only when that's tested. Yeah. Only when it, it's yep. demanded of me to behave. When it's exercised, prudently. brought to yeah, act. Yeah. Yeah. Brought to yep. act. Yeah. And, and same thing, I think, often with trust. We see this in the mm-hmm. movie. Like, would these people before this, would they have said, well, we trust these? Certain-? Yeah, probably they would be willing. But, like, Are in this willing? moment when your life is in the balance yeah. or in somebody else's hands, it's like, yeah. do you? And I think as as you're saying then, well, now we ratchet it up to think of, of God. Yeah. On the day-to-day, in the day-to-day, um, do, I, do I trust God? It's like, well, I, I think so. But then it's like when when there's challenge, when there's something to um, to to sort of elicit an active response yes. of trust. It's like, do I? It's like, well, yeah, hopefully, maybe. But it's worth asking the question. No, it's good. You know, yeah, right? do I trust him only when I don't have to trust him? Yeah, you know, I have I have a disposition to trust him, and by that I mean I have a disposition not to trust him when I need to trust him. Yeah, and this is why making small acts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. of training are so important in yeah. the life of virtue. Yep, getting yep, exactly. And why and to to be honest of course the I mean we're all facing death. Um so uh that being able to trust him, to trust God in the in the moment of death, that's what we're all aiming for in yeah. a sense and have faith and trust and hope in him. 
uh, and for those we love, we we build up the habit to be able to do that in the face of just little as- aspects of tr- trust, even with those around us. Like getting used to handing yourself over to another person who ought to be trusted. Right. I mean, don't go out in the street and just grab, just say, guy and say, hey, tell me what I should do today. That might be a total mistake. Um, but like those who ought to be trusted, do you actually give yourself over to to them? Could be your parents, could be um, it could be your elders, could be your superiors, could be your your spouse, um, whoever it might be. It could be employer. That are you exercising again this discipline such that when it really matters, you know, really matters, yeah. life and death situations, uh, you're able to exercise without a problem. Right. Exactly. Without the needed grace, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What was the second one that you? Courage. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was interesting that. Um, the kind of uh, the, so they're again they're walking they trust they trust him and but the act is they have to walk out into into right into the hands of of their enemies, right? And I mean it's an open death sentence if they get caught out there. If they just turn themselves in to the 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 Iranian you know the embassy the American embassy where they're hostages, maybe they'll just they'll have to depend on Jimmy Carter in, the, in America to figure it out in in the open. But here it's like well this is gonna we have to like know our our identities, they have Canadian identities, passports, and they have to know these things back and forth. Um, they have to go out there and act like this in the face of... I mean, just think of the the physicality of that. Yeah. The kind of... I mean, everyone... There can be anx, anxious situations, but in the face of the people screaming at you, these situations, I mean, yeah, even the physical aspect of courage, the emotional aspect involved, let alone the kind of bringing it up into rational content, is, uh, is, is striking. And so how often we do... I mean, the courage is a... Is a uh, as we talked about in our in our retreat, uh, one of the four cardinal virtues. I think people think it's a bit of bravado, but it's necessary. There are evils in this world, mm-hmm. uh, and the way to deal with evils is is through the virtue of courage. Yep, you know a lot of the time, and it's we make our life very safe. At least I do. It, the job of of the world is to make the life safe and easy and as best you can. But there are some things that are not just not safe. Conversations, situations, this kind of stuff that require the virtue of courage yeah and we see that in in the film too there are times when they're when when the sort of when the plan is hatched that they're going to pretend to be canadians Mm -hmm. filmmakers whatever um where they're they're getting drilled on their identity and what they do and you know where where you can see like as as the reality of what's happening is coming closer and the sort of stress of like getting it all down where like they begin to crumble a little bit yeah. under, you know, the, the stress of that begins to, to sort of wear. Um, but it's there again in the sort of pressure cooker, mm-hmm. like really here for these people in the face. Of, it's a life or death situation. They, yeah. you know, they escape the embassy um, and in doing so have kind of made it worse for themselves. Like, well, in you can't go back right? where you've, you've yeah, stepped you, out. Yeah. Whereas the hostages are at the mercy yes. of of like the American they've government and the Iranians, right. um, these people, because they've escaped, they're they're being hunted now. You're either, gonna you know? be f- you're either free or dead. You're not gonna be hostages. Right. You're gonna be free or dead. Yeah. So, but you see, as you're describing this this need for yeah the the true virtue of courage of fortitude to to sustain yeah. in 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 the face of of death. Yeah. Um, and it really comes it really comes to the fore. In, yeah. in the in the moment. And so. I think this is the beautiful thing about um our, our, the arts is that it brings again brings to clarity in a sensuous way. So oftentimes you talk about the virtues we read about them and this yeah. sort of stuff. And that's good for the intellect, but this really in the imagination like drills down. The imagination and the understanding work together. So yeah. in this they bring out the virtues uh in in a sensuous imaginative kind of palpable. way. That then sticks. Way. It's it's much clearer, I think. Yeah. And so it's really, it, and I think those those virtues it does it does bring out nicely. Yeah. Okay. So a couple virtues. What yeah. about a potential potential pitfall with respect to not the film and the plot, but yeah. like with respect to vice. Yeah. Right. So the whole thing hinges on this sort of made up. Um, let's call it this this kind of um, these aliases, alii. Yeah. What's the plural of alias? Alii, maybe. Yeah. Uh, whatever. These the. The alias that they have set up for this group, yeah. um, which is totally dependent upon lying yeah. and deceiving. Seems that way. Right. It's, yeah, exactly. If we say lying, we've already given away the ghost. Uh, well, so that if, if, it, if, it depends, if it depends on lying, then then it's already it's already vicious. And this is yeah. a question. Um, I, the other thing that this movie raised to my mind, um, and I have Kantian sympathies, so uh, I think you ought not lie in any situation, which is also what Thomas thinks. Um, and... Uh, it raised my mind again, the kind of moral question of, wow, 
morality is tough because on the face of it, on the face of it, this whole espionage trick here is deception. So you're you're intending you're intending to deceive mendacity um, in some fashion, and you ought not intend or deceive intentionally. Or even Thomas is actually stricter on this. You can even you can even lie. Falls Augustine on this, even though you even though the other person knows you're not serious and 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 you don't intend to deceive. But this formal aspect of it can be yeah. lying. But that's this is not even that case. This is a, a clear case that strikes to me. Seems to me at least, or it raises the question that of you're telling these Iranians um, that that they're you know that these are Canadians. You're making this stuff up. It's not mental reservation of like, oh yeah, I know there's a film being made, or this kind of thing. You're like, oh, I've been to Canada one time. No, they're impersonating other people. Yep. And we ask questions, and it. And that's why I try to set myself, the, the immediate reaction is something like, well, of course this has to be okay because these are Americans. Uh, and, you know, and I think there's a sense of, well, you know, in wartime or against such people or criminals, criminals don't deserve justice. So Dietrich, von Hild- Dietrich Bonhoeffer, not von Hildebrand, in his ethics book, some point says that some people do not deserve the truth. And so he's okay with this. He's doing the context of lying to Nazis, uh, the, the hard case. Yeah. Um, and he says that in there's... They don't deserve it, so you're not lying to them because you can only lie by get by when you ought to offer the truth. And so they don't deserve the truth. Um, you're not lying. It's like some playing with kids, and you might think that applies to Iranians, um, but you also might think that's a horrible analysis of what lying is. Like he's just wrong about that. And if that's true, then espionage sure in this case at least sure looks like lying. And then it just looks like the me- ends justifying the means. Like we got to get these guys out. How can we do it? Well, we can either kill someone's grandmother or we can lie or we can do something else well these first two are sins but we should probably lie instead of kill someone's grandmother that's tricky so it, but again ah how do you do you know i mean we have all ci we have this you know the cia which i assume is not just built on they're not designed to lie but it does raise a question of the modern world especially as the complications involved there we may even have cia people listening to this right now um, listening in as listeners, not just as like tapping it for yeah. their purposes. I doubt we're being tapped into. I don't think what we have here is like high key enough for for anything. But who knows? Uh, yeah. The, what do you think about? I mean, what do you what do you think about? You're you're pretty strict on on that line. I mean, as much as you can be, I suppose. Yeah, it's like the the principles are clear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like the definition of a lie is doing something or speaking with the intent to deceive. Yeah. Um, And if we're following that and like the circumstances, uh, you know, the circumstances don't make an evil thing. Can't change the form of the act. Right. Yeah. So the the circumstances can make a good action bad, Mm -hmm. but they can't make a bad action good. Yeah. So unless, unless we're coming up with some other definition of what's being done here, um, it seems to leave us in a pretty tight moral spot. Yeah, they should. And yeah. the and I think kind of the I mean this is this is uh, I I know a sort of not like a hot topic or a hot like issue in like the grand scheme of things, but mm-hmm. in like the moral dilemma of like were the Nazis entitled? Should they have been? Are they entitled to the truth? And the, you know that's mm-hmm. as in the as far as like moral dilemmas it's Mm -hmm. it's there as a classic example of a moral dilemma um so there there has been a lot of thought on this and i you know it really depends if you're if you're looking at the literature on it Mm -hmm. it really depends on sort of what you subscribe to you know are you following augustine thomas yeah Yeah. um or even kant here you know from from that or are you following um some probabilist or something yeah, yeah you know and you can you can you can justify that this is wrong or that this is right, I think, I mean... I, it's tricky, you know, and it's, this is in an episode on on lying and dealing, drilling down on that where we'd have to actually make the distinctions here and yeah. perhaps throw a bunch of... compare the theories because no one no one on, on, the, on the Catholic side or the Christian side would want to say, yeah, lying is okay if it gets good stuff done. So even those... It's a bit like the double effect yeah. um, cases. Even those who, who would say, actually, there's nothing wrong, um, just like bombing of Hiroshima, for instance... I mean, you can you would make a case that actually that was not an evil act for you know ends justifies the, the yeah. means, but under this aspect, so it gets involved with intention description, a little more complicated, but it does raise it. It should at least at least brings to conscience my mind that that it, this is and this is a good aspect of it. 
that the modern world presents us with situations that we might not even think about are dangerous, and we might just assume that things are obvious in this way. And they're not always. There are yeah. some. There are bad cases. There. Are, here's let's put it this way: I've been talking about the kind of courage in the face of death, and martyrdom is a thing that the Christians in the early centuries kind of cared about. They thought this was actually not a bad thing. Right. It was bad under one aspect, yeah. but it wasn't something to be avoided at all costs. And I think once Christendom is a larger historical story, once it kind of sets in normalized, I think we do sometimes, which is why it's good to read the early accounts again, forget that this world is not really our world. We're on here, we're, we're here on loan. We have, we pay our rent, we help out a bit, we've, you know, furnished the place a little better. But at the end of the day, the prince of this world is not the king of this world. The king of the world is Christ, but the prince of the world is Satan. Yeah. And that it might come to a situation where it's it's you have no good no seemingly naturally good option. And you need to choose the right the right situation in in there that's at the right that's the right supernatural option or the right uh, faithful option. Now, a final point about this, just from the philosophical perspective, is that perhaps on the broader terms, forget bracket this movie and think about espionage and CIA. You might think, oh, God's point, guys say that you can't be a part of the CIA. No, um, you might be able to be involved. You, it's, it's very possible that espionage can be done without lying. Let's say that's possible. I think that is possible, that you can do espionage through mental reservation, through different things. You know, They, needed, they need not to have done the Canadian route. And you might say... Um, so espionage, in principle, could be done without without lying. Um, just like, for instance, fighting wars, in principle, can be done justly. But it's also the, it also seems like it might be the case that no war has been fought justly entirely. It might have entered for just reasons, but surely they've killed prisoners, this kind of thing. Like, the war hasn't been perfectly justly yeah. perse- prosecuted. And you might think the same thing, that in principle, which is how you set up institutions, in principle, uh, espionage can work without very carefully but without lying but that in practice this almost never or never has happened and i wouldn't say we as christian a christian nation we don't have a, we shouldn't have a cia it would just say to realize that it's tricky and we always move we try to move forward towards perfection and not get sloppy about it and keep our ideal at center just like when we fight wars just because we're not always going to be perfect it doesn't mean we say well forget it i right. think that's a good it's an important principle to remember that yeah so, by way of kind of wrapping up, I think in in addition to just being a good film and kind of yeah. suspenseful, fun to watch kind of thing, interesting, historical to some degree, at yeah. least in its premises, not. Uh, maybe not, um, it does bring to, as, as you had said already, you know, art here brings to the fore in a sort of palpable, kind of sensuous way these... The, the, these um, these experiences of virtues, of potential mm-hmm. vices, of mm-hmm. uh, rather than just reading or kind of abstracting about them kind of in a setting, in a situation that then develops or allows for the development of further thought and consideration, which I think is always provoking when you're yeah. watching or reading a novel or something like that. Seems so. like it's one of the only reasons you ought to really watch movies. Yeah. Other than pure entertainment, it's nice to also have been something that's entertaining and educative. Yeah. So check it out. Argo, Ben Affleck, 2012. That's right. That's us. Great. All right, all. Thanks for listening to this episode of God Splinning. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Like, subscribe, leave a five-star review. If you'd like to donate to the podcast through Patreon, follow the link in the description. Also in the description, you can follow links to shop God Splitting merchandise and to check out our upcoming retreat offerings. Uh, so especially our August retreat, mm-hmm. uh, our men's retreat in Brevard, North Carolina. And um, Check it out there. Gentlemen, if you're interested in coming, we're excited to have you. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, know of our prayers for you. Please pray for us. And until next time, God bless.